Welcome back. In this video, we're going to start integrating Thrill C into Python code. Many of our integrations, such as YOLO v5 or Detectron 2, handle all of this for you, while other integrations like Hugging Face or PyTorch Lightning provide useful tools for interfacing with Thrill C. In this video, we'll look at the simple general case of registering PyTorch datasets as tables. If you are using one of the integrations, feel free to skip to episode 3 of this series, where we'll introduce the ThrillC dashboard. We start off with a notebook using PyTorch to train a model on the Caltech 101 dataset. And as we can see, TorchVision is used to create a Torch dataset. Train and validation splits are created and sent to separate data loaders. A model and optimizer is also created. Each epoch then comprises of training and subsequent validation on the two splits. Let's integrate 3LC into the notebook. We first import 3LC. And note that while the package on PyPy is called 3LC with a 3, Python does not support names starting with digits, which is why we import TLC with a T. Since we have a torch dataset, we can use tlc.table.fromTorch dataset to register the dataset to create what's called a 3LC table for each split. A 3LC table is a simple tabular data structure, similar to a pandas data frame, which can be viewed, edited, and versioned in the 3LC dashboard. To improve the visualization of your dataset in the 3LC dashboard, we want to give 3LC a few hints about what our dataset contains. The labels of this dataset, for instance, are integers. We know that these integers correspond to 101 different classes, and we want those names of those classes to be visible in the dashboard. Here we provide what's called a structure, where we tell ThrillC what one sample of our dataset looks like. In this case, it's a tuple of a pill image and a categorical label with this set of categories. If no structure is provided, ThrillC will always infer one, but this might not always be what we want. We also provide table, dataset, and project names for the tables. We give these tables the name original because, as we'll see in later episodes, they are the original versions of your datasets. If we now go back to the dashboard, we'll see that the two tables we just created have appeared. Clicking one of them, we can see all of our samples. And notice that the category names we provided with the structure have appeared for the labels. More on the dashboard in later videos. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to complete the code integration to collect per sample metrics on both datasets in a 3LC run.